Hey guys, how's it going? I'm back here with another video and today I decided to make a kind of like a crash course, a beginner's tutorial. However, I'm going to deal with a bunch of really important stuff which is going to prepare you guys if you guys are interested in learning TypeScript if you already have the knowledge of JavaScript. So basically, I believe that in order to learn TypeScript, it is really important that you already know JavaScript previously. It is totally not necessary. However, I believe it is the best way of learning it. It's my personal experience. It's how I learned it. And I believe that TypeScript will soon overtake JavaScript just because it is extremely important in the in the business world right so in large-scale projects it is extremely important to use TypeScript so how I'm gonna teach you guys is basically I have some examples here three examples to be exact of three different functions and I'm gonna show to you guys first the version of it in JavaScript as you can see right here this is the first one and then I'm gonna show you guys how to convert that function to TypeScript as you can see currently I have a JavaScript file it's called index.js however as I show the example for TypeScript, I'm going to change it to index.ts, which is the extension for TypeScript. At the end, I'll also show you guys how to set up TypeScript in some more useful situations like a React application or a Node.js backend. And you can start working with TypeScript after we finish the video. So the first thing we have here is a very simple function. It is called increment. The thing it does is basically you can see it's it receives a value called counter vol and it just returns that value plus one for example if i wanted to create a variable called counter and i set it equal to increment of 10 an increment will receive a value of 10 as counter vol and it would return 11 because 10 plus 1 so counter would be equal to 11 because this is the return statement of the increment function so that should be fine in normal javascript however uh, it leads to many issues. For example, imagine if we don't receive a, a number here. Imagine if we receive a string. JavaScript doesn't know what it's... You can see right here, it, said, it says parameter counter vol can be anything. We don't know exactly what it is. So how can I add plus one to uh, a variable that I don't know the type, right? So that's where TypeScript comes in. I'm going to show you guys now the version in TypeScript and explain what are the changes we made. Okay, guys, as you can see right here, um, the first thing you notice is that I changed the index, the, the name of the file to index.ts, as you can see right here, because it's TypeScript, as I mentioned. And here is a TypeScript version of this function and this logic. And the main changes here is that we had to define for every variable that we created, we had to define the type. So in TypeScript, if you create a variable, for example, um, name, imagine that's a variable, right? And I set it equal to my name here, Pedro. You can't do this because TypeScript automatically requires you to give it a type. The different types that it might have, as you can see, it's assuming it is string. Uh, that's what JavaScript does. It assumes it's string. However, with TypeScript, you have to define it immediately. And to define the type of a variable, you can come right here and give it the type. So string, for example. And actually, this is giving me an error because we already have another name variable in this application that I'm going to show you guys later. But for example, if I call this any other thing like... Uh, first name you can see that we just created a variable which is a string and we defined that it is a string before we actually set it equal to the value that it has we can do the same thing with uh, for example if I create a constant instead of a variable um, called um, age of my parents uh, I don't know why it came up with that but imagine this is a number right so I can say number is equal to um, I'm just gonna put a random number um, 24 they are not 24 but I'm just gonna put this you can see that in JavaScript we didn't need to put this number thing over here we just add it e to be equal to 24 however since this is TypeScript you have to do it this way there's all the different types there's boolean there's um, number there's string as I mentioned there's more to come and I'm gonna show you guys exactly how do we work with those but you can see that the main changes we made to this function are related to this that I just talked about because as you can see right here when you create a function called increment, for example, I set it equal and on at the top here, it has the arguments. And the only argument it has is counter vol, which is a number. So for every argument you put in a function, you have to define its type. For example, imagine if this function also took, um, I don't know, a book title. I, I know it has nothing to do with the, with the function, but it took a book title. Then you would have to define that it is a string, for example, right? So that's exactly what you do when you're working with functions. There's still more things that you need to do with the function. However, we're going to see that in the next in the next example. But as you can see right here, 
we know that this is going to return a number because its counter of all is a number, a number plus a number, which is one. It always returns a number. So when I create the counter variable down here to, to, to get the value, I also have to define it as a number, as you can see. So this over here will be a number equal to 11 because we passed 10 here, similar to the last example. So now let's go to the next example, which will be in JavaScript. Okay, guys, I'm back. And I actually decided to add a new example. Now it's going to be four examples because I really need to show you guys this. So imagine this very simple piece of logic in JavaScript, right? You can see the file is back in JavaScript. I'm going to be alternating between them just to show you guys the example. But for example, in this file, the only thing it does it, it creates a, an array, a list called programming languages, it sets it's equal to um, like three, an array of three elements, Java, TypeScript and Python. And it also pushes uh, a new element at the end called Go language is also a language and at the end it only console logs programming languages. So what would be the issue with this in TypeScript? Well, if you remember the last example, the main issue with this is that we created a variable without defining its type. So how do we actually define a type for an array? As you can see right here, it already says because it, JavaScript works this way, it automatically does it for you. But with TypeScript, you're obligated to do it yourself. So what we want is a an array of string, which is this syntax right here, I'm going to convert it to TypeScript and show to you guys. So the only difference would be, as you can see here in the TypeScript version, is that we now define it as a an array of strings. And th if this was like a bunch of numbers, it would be an array of numbers like this. So the idea is you put the type of the elements, so string, and you put here the array, the empty bracket to define that it is an array. So that's how you actually work with arrays in TypeScript. Okay, guys, so this next example is a little bit more complicated. However, it exemplifies one of the most important parts of TypeScript. And as you can see right here, um, in this JavaScript file, I created a basic a basic function which just fetches data from an API. If you've never worked with an API before, then this wouldn't be as applicable to you. However, APIs are extremely useful in various situations. And it is a fundamental part of TypeScript and JavaScript as well. So what I did here is I just created a function called fetch data, which takes an URL for the API, and it returns the fat like the data returned from the fetch, right? So we use the fetch function in JavaScript, and we pass the URL to make the API call, then we have a promise, and we return the response.json, which is the data. So basically, you imagine that this is responding that, that this is returning a promise, right? And we can get the data by just saying const data equal to fetch. And I can pass the URL here, fetch data is the function we just created. So I can pass the URL here. So imagine I pass this API, th this URL my awesome api.com slash data slash subscribe, this doesn't exist. But imagine it, it existed, and we're making this API call, then if I if, imagine that this API data was the data for a, a person, right? And the data we returned would be data dot name, data dot email, data dot age and data dot is married. Imagine that we can say that because the data returned by the API is an object containing um, this properties, right? A property called name, a property dot called email and a property called age and is married. This works perfectly in JavaScript. However, it only works perfectly if we assume that we are that we're getting uh, in the return from the API, an object containing these properties. However, most times we can't we can't just uh, assume that we can't leave for luck because imagine if a, an API changes imagine uh, all the things that can happen, you need to be secure of the data you're receiving. So you actually have to define what is a tape, what is a data you're receiving. So that's what we're going to be doing in TypeScript. So this is the version of the function in TypeScript. And I know it might seem a, a very confusing if you've never worked with TypeScript before. However, I'm going to dissect exactly what is happening here. So remember when I said that we need to define how our data is going to be returned. So for every function, you need to add at the end here, two call to, like two dots, and the value it's returning. Usually, it will return void, meaning that we're not returning anything in our function. But if it is, we have to put the type. In this case, we are returning a promise, as you can see right here. And the data that will be included in that promise will be uh, an object con containing information about the user. So what we can do is basically we can create an interface called iUser, 
which has the property's name, which is a string, email, which is a string, age, which is a number, and is married, which is a Boolean. And we can say that the data we are receiving from this function, so the data that is returned from this function, is of this schema right here. You have to do this whenever you have an object. So for example, if I wanted to create an object called, I'm just going to create an object called, um, I don't know, TypeScript. Let's create this object. Actually, let me just call it TypeScript like this. It is an object containing information about TypeScript. What information can we give to TypeScript? Well, let's give it um, a name. The name of TypeScript is TypeScript, as we all know. Um, let's give a, a, a Boolean called awesome. And let's ask if it is awesome or not. So it is true. And for now, let's just leave it like this. This is the object. So we haven't, de we haven't defined how what this object is and in TypeScript for every object you need to create an interface so for example over here if I create an interface called programming I usually like to call interfaces starting with an I and then the name of the interface so programming language this is an interface which is going to define all the properties we can have related to a programming language object right so the first property we want is name which is a string. Um, the second one is basically we want um, the word awesome. We want to know if it is awesome or not. And it is a Boolean. So when we say something like um, TypeScript, we have to define its type. So what we do is we define it as an I programming language. And now it knows that if I, re if I remove this, you'll see that it already knows that it needs a name. So because it's getting it from the interface that we created above. So we can just pass a name as I mentioned, TypeScript. Um, and if I want to pass an awesome property, you can see that it's I didn't pass awesome yet. So that's why it has a, a red squiggly line because it knows that the schema for this object needs an awesome property, which is a Boolean. So if I add a Boolean here called awesome equals to true, then the error removes. And something that it is also important, imagine if we actually wanted to add something else like the age of the programming language but it's a number but we don't want it to be uh, uh, like a required field so you can see currently this is giving me a red squiggly line because i'm currently um i'm not adding the age here for this object however if we wanted to make optional what we can do is we can just put a question mark here and it knows that it is optional so we can if we wanted to add age we could and you can see it is optional it appears over here however it is not necessary and we could do this for any language we want we just created the object i can do, call this java java for example then give it a name and it has the same uh, schema as before the same interface so this is just a small example of how interfaces and objects work and the reason why we need those is because we're saying that our function is returning a promise which has an object containing this interface right here so we know that the user will have a name an email an age and the property is married not to mention that as we've seen before we need to define the variable api url which is the argument to be a string because that's how we return and now if we create a variable like this so i want to create a variable called user it's going to be an i user because that's the property we want and it's going to be equal to fetch data something like um, API URL. So we're getting the data from the API. We know it's going to be a, a user. We're just putting a random example here. So we, we know that this is going to be um, th this is a user, right? However, you can see that it's saying um, uh, type promise you uh, user is missing the following properties because we have to pass those properties in order for this to be re uh, correct, right? So we can say something like user dot age or user dot name as you can see it is taking those properties from the user interface that we created above and this is a really important thing in in typescript because working with objects is something extremely important when you're working with front end or back end code and you have to be you have to define those immediately when you work with them so let's go to the next example so this is the next example. I'm going to explain to you guys what this is. I didn't change it to TypeScript, uh, to, to JavaScript. However, this is JavaScript code because you can see we, we are not defining anything. Imagine that we want to create a function called serve cheese. The only thing it does is it takes a cheese type and it takes up uh, some servings. Like this is an amount of servings. This is a number. Um, and we just want to console log the message. You want, um, I don't know, three servings. I'm going to add servings here of the type of cheese. 
So we can say cheese type, right? So what can we do to change this to TypeScript? Because we have to define this kind of stuff. But there is a limited amount of types of cheeses. So how do we define all the different types of cheese that we can choose between those? So how do we do that? I'm going to show you guys in TypeScript. So in TypeScript, you have this enum data type, which doesn't exist in JavaScript, which exists in several different languages like Java. And what it does is basically you can define inside of it different options in kind of like a enumeration. It's an enumerator, which basically you can define different options that something can be, right? I don't know how to explain that clearer, but basically we know that there's different types of cheeses. So we can put here all the different types that we want it to be. And when we create the function serve cheese, we can say that the cheese type will have the prop will have the type cheese, meaning that it can only be one of these options. So for example, if I came here and said, um, I wanted to call the serve cheese um, function, and I wanted to pass a cheese type, um, I couldn't pass something like um, uh, what is another American cheese, I don't even know if that's a cheese, because it's not a cheese type, it's giving me an error as you can see right here. And I also need to pass another thing over here, which is the amount of servings. I'm going to pass three. But you can see that it's giving me um, some error for this because this over here is not part. You can see argument of type American cheese is not assignable to parameter of type cheese because it's not one of the options. What we can do instead is we can just directly come here and say cheese. We can grab the cheese enumerator cheese dot chatter or dot blue world. We can just grab one of the options blue mode, sorry, and this would work perfectly. However, there's another thing that is important, you can see right here that this function doesn't return anything, it just console logs um, some message. So if you want to create a function that console logs something, what you can do is you can just say that the function returns void, which basically means it's not returning anything. It's just uh, you like the logic inside of it is purely um, done on its own, you don't need to return anything. So that's basically it. Um, I'm going to show you guys now a really quick example on how to set up uh, TypeScript and React. Okay, guys, so as you can see right here, I have uh, opened up a really simple folder in VS Code. It has nothing inside of it. And what I want to do is I want to run some commands to create a React application using TypeScript. So how do I do that? Well, I basically just opened up my terminal, as you can see, and I run the normal command for creating a react application npx create react um, react let me push this a bit create react app as you can see right here app but at the end I also need to put the name of the application let me call it um, TypeScript example that's the name of the <laughs> file folder that I'm going to create my project in and at the end I need to pass a flare that flare will basically define that this is a TypeScript project in order to do that, I can pass two dashes, as you can see, two, uh, two hyphens, and then put template, and then TypeScript. So I want to say that I want to grab the TypeScript template, and I want to press Enter, and this should start creating our React application. And we'll automatically install everything related to TypeScript, create all of our files. Instead of JSX, it will be TSX, which is the TypeScript version of a React like uh, JSX file and everything will start being created as you can see right here and we can even already see the SRC all of our files are currently being either like TSX or TS files as you can see so it means everything is being set up for TypeScript and that's basically it this is how you create a TypeScript um, uh, application in, in React and if you guys want I can make a full tutorial on React on how to use TypeScript in React because there are some small stuff in it that it is important to understand like how to define event types, how to do a lot of different stuff, how to define types for um, components, for I don't know, states, that kind of stuff. So I can definitely make a video on it. But for now, that's basically it. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, if you enjoyed it, please leave a like down below. Comment what you want to see next. Subscribe because I'm posting every single day and I would really appreciate the support. And I see you guys next time.